And then lastly this morning, amen. If you're going to finish well, you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus as you run up Heartbreak Hill. Amen. Heartbreak Hill. Let me read to you what Jesus did. How many know we got to keep our eyes on him? This is looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. How many think the cross was fun? No, it was not. It was difficult. It was hard. He said, despising the shame of it, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I guess that he, he got the place where he was looking for, right? He's at the right hand of the Father right now. Amen? And it goes on to say, for consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. Imagine how Jesus must have felt as they put the crown of thorns on him, as they beat his back, as they spit on him, as they plucked his beard out, all the difficult things that he had to go through. We're supposed to consider him, and there's the reason why, lest we become weary and discouraged in our souls. I don't care who you are. Sometimes you're going to have to face heartbreak hill. Now, in the Boston Marathon, there's a legendary obstacle called heartbreak hill. Starting about mile 13 of the Boston race, of course, there's a number of hills climaxing at mile 19 with Heartbreak Hill. It's the longest, steepest hill of the race. And what makes this even worse is that world-class runners, they hit the wall around 18 or mile 18 or 19. You say, what does that mean, hit the wall? There's a point when their bodies have depleted all of the glycogen stored in the muscles and their whole, all their muscles begin screaming for energy. Everything in their body He's telling them stop and just as they hit that difficult physical moment the most difficult part of the track comes when they've got to run up the hill and many feel like they're just going to die as they go up that hill and heartbreak hill tests runners to the very core of their determination and strength and I've got news for you everybody's going to face a heartbreak hill in your life I wish I could tell you this morning oh man life's all level it's all easy all downhill it's not. We have some problems from time to time. At times we face heartbreak hill. A daughter becomes pregnant out of well, wedlock. A loved one dies. We lose our job. We suffer long-term unemployment. There's pain of divorce or a broken, a broken relationship. There's a, a, a financial situation that, that, that takes from us. There's an emotional breakdown and, or, or something happens. And, and there are people here this morning who perhaps you're in the midst of your heartbreak hill. Or there might be some of you that can look back in your life and say, oh, just a while ago I was at heartbreak hill. But let me tell you what you've got to do when you're going up heartbreak hill. You've got to trust him. You've got to trust the Lord. James 1 and verse 12 tells us this. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Yeah. I remember years ago, I, if you were to really just ask me, Pastor Bob, what was your greatest heartbreak? I can tell you what it was. It was about 1989 when I left the city of Stanford, Texas. Difficult moment for me, for my wife and our family and our ministry. I won't go into all the details, but for me it was heartbreak hill. Yeah. In fact, the Lord opened the door for me to be an interim pastor in, in, in our, my hometown of Worthington, Minnesota. And I remember the first day going into that office of that of that beautiful church there in Worthington. It was fairly new at that time. And it was a great big office in there. And I was just, all I had to do was preach on Sunday and visit the ladies at the nursing home. That's what all I had to do. That's what the church board had told me to do. And so I remember going in there and I sat down behind that chair. And the first day I cried for about four hours. So I went back the second day and I cried for about four hours. I was so broken. My heart was so broken. When I got through that, Months came, I went, became a missionary. And what I discovered about myself was that I wanted to tell people my heartbreak 
And don't misunderstand me. I believe in telling people your story. How many do there's power in telling your story? It's okay to tell your story. If you're telling someone in a way that you want to get over it, in a way that you're sharing the grief and the pain. But there's another way that you can tell your story that's telling it in bitterness, that's telling it in anger, that's saying, don't you, do you, do you know whatever happened to me? And I'll tell you something, across years, I discovered that some bitterness had got down into my soul. A heartbreak hill had made me angry. A heartbreak hill had broken my heart until I got my eyes off of those who hurt me at Heartbreak Hill Amen. and got my eyes on Jesus. Because I want you to hear me today, as long as you focus on those people, whoever they are, those painters, you know, those people that gossip, those that boss, that, that ex-wife, that this, that this, that other, as long as you're focusing on them, let me tell you what's happened. The bitterness is going to still continue, but you've got to get your eyes off of them, and you've got to get your eyes over onto Jesus. Do you have any witnesses in the house? Years went by. I was functioning, but I wasn't completely whole. And I remember I picked up a little book, and it was a satirical book, and it was about the life of Jesus. And I, I should have found the book and, and read the passage that got me, but I, I'll kind of quote it because I can kind of remember it. It talked about Jesus' crucifixion. And then it talked about his resurrection. Uh -huh. And then the author gave you this satirical hook. And he said this, don't you remember how Jesus came up out of the grave? How he vowed vengeance on all of those. Now remember, he's talking in satire. Right. How he vowed vengeance on all of those who hurt him. Don't you remember how he promised to destroy the ones who hung him on the cross? Don't you remember how he told his story over and over again with angerness and bitterness? Don't you remember how he told his disciples to be bitter as well? <laughs> Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of your faith. And I was like, Lord, that's what I've done. You see, as the heartbreak heal, you've got to Keep your eyes on Jesus. That's right. And you've got to keep your eyes on the prize. That's right. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people that started that heartbreak hill. Right? <laughs> And they, they thought, I'm going to make it. And they, don't, they discovered that heartbreak hill just kind of hung on to them for years and years. Listen, today, at the end of 2018, amen, we're going to deal with all of that. We're going to leave all the heartbreaks in 2018 because we want to march into 2019 free. Hallelujah. We want to march into 2019 looking at Jesus. Because let me tell you something. What you and I have suffered in 2018 is zero compared to Jesus. Am I right? We haven't gone through anything compared to Jesus. None of us has suffered like Jesus. We have not resisted unto blood. Come on. And Jesus is the one who suffered. Jesus is the one who went through it all. And if I look at him and I realize that that same Jesus is down inside of you and me, I'm talking about the hope of glory. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Christ the King. That if he lives down on the inside of me, then what I gotta do is I gotta just get up and I say, I'm gonna run, man. I'm gonna leave all that heartbreak was that it was the Lord who carried me through all along. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a verse. This is yeah. an amazing verse. I don't think I've ever preached this verse until today. Isaiah 46, 3 and 4. It says, in all the remnant of the house of Israel. How many of you know that we're Jews by, by Come faith? On, Come on. Come on. We're Abraham's seed by faith. Hello? Yeah. It says this, who have been upheld by me from birth. That's right. Who have been carried from the womb. Oh, I like that. <laughs> God's been carrying me and he's been carrying you. That's right. That's why there's only one set of footprints in the sand. That's That's right. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. It goes on to say, even to your old age, oh. I am he. Right. And even to gray hairs. I try to cover mine up as quickly as I can. But even to gray hairs, 
the Lord says, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear and even I will carry and will deliver. That's the Lord that we serve. That's the Lord that we serve. He said, I'll carry you. I'll carry you. So you want to know what he does when we're going through heartbreak hill? He puts his yeah. mighty arm around us. And he says, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Then he squeezes you a little bit tighter. And he says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we're going to reap a harvest if we don't give up. Amen. So that at the end of our life, we can stand and we can say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Would you stand with me today? Yeah, Thank you for just letting me share this word. Amen. Amen with you. You guys are so easy to preach to, I'm telling you. You guys are just like giant sponges, all right? Keep soaking it up. Amen. You know, I love you. I just want to say that. Thank you for letting me share today. Amen. Share out of my own heart yes. today as well. How great he is. How great he is. How many of you say, Pastor, I just want